Hello students, welcome to the fourth part of the chapter weather and climate. In today's video, I am going to explain you all humidity and atmospheric pressure and the ways to measure them using the instruments. Let's see with humidity. Humidity is the moisture present in the atmosphere. Have you ever visited a place that just made you feel hot and sticky the entire time? No matter what you did to cool off, it was because of humidity. So humidity is actually the amount of water vapor present in the air. If there is lot of water vapor in the air, the humidity will be high. The higher the humidity, the better it feels outside. Now, how to record humidity? Let's see. For measuring humidity or you can say moisture in the atmosphere, you need to compare the temperature readings and that we do using wet bulb thermometer and dry bulb thermometer. Now what is this? How does it function? For that we need to see the next part. As you can look at the picture, there are two thermometers, one dry bulb thermometer which is similar to the ordinary thermometer and the other one which is wet bulb thermometer which is kept moist with the help of water and wick. Wick means cotton. The difference which comes between these two thermometers means the dry bulb thermometer and the wet bulb thermometer is called temperature depression as you can see on the screen temperature depression is marked and it is used to determine the atmospheric humidity. On the weather reports humidity is usually explained as relative humidity. Now, relative humidity is the relationship between the, between the amount of moisture or water vapor present in the air and the total amount of moisture the air can hold at a given temperature. When humidity is high, the air is so clogged with water vapor that there is not any room for anything. If you sweat when it is humid, it can be hard to cool off and that is because of your sweat cannot evaporate into the air like it needs to be. Now let's see how atmospheric pressure works. The air around you has weight that we, we everybody know and it presses against everything it touches. That pressure is called atmospheric pressure or it is also called air pressure. In other words, you can say it is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere on the surface of the earth and gravity pulls it up to, to the earth. Now we will see how to measure atmospheric pressure. On the screen, you can see the picture of a barograph or barometer is shown. It is measured in millibars. So, in order to in order to measure atmospheric pressure, we use barograph or barometer. Atmospheric pressure decreases as altitude increases, and it is so happened that when you go to mountainous areas, there because of high pressure and high altitude, you will get difficulty in breathing. As you know, during the day, what happens? The land heats up and you know, a kind of pressure zone is created. All these things happened. So all these um, about the pressure zone and high pressure zone and low pressure zone, how does it work? We are going to see next. Now look at the uh, look at the screen carefully there is a picture and it shows how during the daytime pressure zone is created i'm explaining you as you know during the day land heats up more quickly because of the sun and so because of the heating of the land the warm air rises up and creates a low pressure zone on the land now let's talk about what happens above the sea during the day a high pressure zone is created above the sea and because and it happens because of the air above the sea is cool and comparatively heavy 
Now, when the winds blow from high pressure area means sea to low pressure area means land, it causes sea breeze during the day. Now, let's see how land breeze is formed. At night, land cools down rapidly, whereas sea remains warm. So, a low pressure area is created above the sea and a high pressure area is created on the land because land is comparatively cooler to sea. Now, cool winds blow from land to sea and hence land breezes are formed. And in both the breezes that is that are land breeze and sea breeze, the weather and climate play a very important role. Atmospheric pressure is an indicator of weather. When a low pressure system moves into an area, it usually leads to cloudiness, wind and precipitation. And when high pressure system, uh, system uh, creates, it leads to fair calm weather. Now, let's revise what we have read. First of all, we have read about humidity, the definition. Sorry students, here the definition uh, spelling is wrong. You, you can mark it uh, right. So, we have read about the definition, instrument to measure. Which instrument we use to measure? So, dry bulb thermometer and uh, uh, wet bulb thermometer. And how does it function? And also, we have read about the relative humidity. After that, we have read about atmospheric pressure. The definition of that instrument to measure, which is barograph or barometer. And what is the impact of atmospheric pressure? So, it creates... It creates pressure zones and because of the pressure zone, high, high pressure area and low pressure area, breezes are formed. These breezes are called sea breeze and land breeze. In the next video students, we are going to discuss about the other two elements of weather and the next video will be the last video based on the third chapter weather and climate. And one more thing I also, uh, one more thing I want to convey to you, uh, all of you that the next video will be the last video uh, before the summer vacation. After the next week, summer vacation is going to be started. So that video will be a bit longer and the assignment, the next assignment will be the summer vacation assignment. So kindly go through it. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and if you have liked this video, share among your friends and uh, do subscribe to get the latest notifications of all the new videos. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.